Hi everyone, <laughs> welcome again to this PagerDuty 101 training series. This is part three. We're gonna talk about how to set up schedules and escalation policies over the next 30 minutes. I'll guide you through a couple of our most commonly seen schedules um, before we get into those escalation policies. At the end of today's session, just like I've been doing for the last couple parts, I will talk about the remaining fourth session. Tomorrow is the last day that we get to do this together. Um, so if you do have questions, please feel free to post in the chat. Uh, I really appreciate you all are, are already getting that started, warming up. If you have any questions, post there. I'll try to check that periodically. Um, and we will, we will just jump right on into things. Now, quick introduction again. My name is Camden Louie. I'm one of your senior technical trainers. Um, I'm with the Pager University team. As I posted in the chat, I am based in the San Francisco office. Would love to see any of you there if you have the opportunity to come through the area. Um, we have a good group of folks here from all over the Americas, I would say. Um, so, you know, if you're in the area, please let me know. Would love to host you in our office. But with that, let's go ahead and get right on in to our next steps. So yesterday, we in part two, we talked about user permissions, adding users and setting up user profiles. Um, that's one of those key pieces when we are configuring the PagerD account. We are going to continue on with our fundamentals and go to our next section where we will talk about creating those on-call schedules and escalation policies. So these are the different objects that are necessary to ensure you have a team in PagerDuty who can be on call in, in an on-call rotation. And we will then set up escalations to make sure we always have backup. I think it's really important to note that when you are on call, the point of the PagerDuty platform is to ensure you are never alone when you are on call. You always have a backup person. You always have the um, availability of team members to loop them in where, where necessary or where possible. So we are just trying to make our system an easier way of doing that, of being able to loop in and communicate with your with your different team members. So with that, I am going to um, talk a little bit more about schedules specifically. And um, you'll hear me talk about a little more of the why, the reason why we wanna set up schedules and escalation policies is because it also protects your team. We're only gonna contact the appropriate on-call person or perhaps you have a small group of people who need to be contacted. Wherever possible, we are going to want to avoid what we call the spray and pray method, meaning you blast an entire team of people with notifications and try to pull them in to work on a problem just in case you need their help. Typically, the teams with the with the happiest culture, um, the companies that have the happiest culture, quite honestly, are those that have built a culture where really you have that one on-call person or the few, few small number of people who are on call for a particular shift, they are ready and aware that they could be notified about a service that they're supporting or that they own, but everybody else can rest assured that they will not be interrupted unless it really becomes a large incident that needs additional support. So with that, I'm going to jump right on into some schedule basics how we actually set up those rotations. And so here we are in my PagerDuty demo account. Again, this should look familiar if you were able to attend our first couple sessions. This is our instant dashboard. We can see some open incidents here. For today, we are going to be spending time in this people menu. So I'm going to navigate from this people menu to the on-call schedules page. Now, there are four basic steps when we're creating a schedule that I'll go through. You'll be able to add users, set up your actual on-call rotation, set a start time for the layer, and then you're going to want to double check that everything looks as you expect it to and it follows some best practices. For the majority of users, folks who are responders or observers, you will be able to come into the schedules page and find your schedules as needed based on perhaps searching for a name, a team name, 
um, or whatever name your schedule might have. You also have the ability, if you have Teams enabled, to filter your view based on Teams. So right now I have 21 pages of schedules that I could go through. If perhaps I only wanted to see schedules associated with my Teams, that reduces the number down to 11 pages. That could be very helpful. Or perhaps I would like to only see the schedules that um, I'm a part of. I don't wanna see um, schedules with other folks in it. So I'm going to go ahead and select my name here and PagerDuty will be able to filter down the schedules to just show me the schedules where I am one of the on-call people. Now, I did want to also point out when we are looking at a schedule, it's really easy to read what's going on here. So as an example, I have this customer support tier one primary schedule. You'll notice that I use these labels, primary, secondary, and backup, manager. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Now here, as most users will be able to view the schedules, but they wouldn't be the ones configuring the schedules, this would be the page they would spend the most time on. I can see a short description right here about what this schedule represents. Layer one is a daytime shift, layer two is a nighttime shift, and layer three is a weekend shift. All right, so if I hover over any of the names here, I can see exactly what that shift entails. So for example, I can see that George is going to be on call from 5 p.m. until 8 a.m. That sounds like the nighttime shift to me. And then it looks like Fred will be on call from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. the next day. So there's my daytime shift. So nighttime shift, daytime shift, and then I have Hermione here on call from 5 p.m on Friday to 8 a.m. on Monday. That's my weekend shift. All right, so as I'm looking forward at this, I can see who is on call. I can see that I'm going to be on call for an upcoming weekend shift. Um, and this is also a place where any responders would have the opportunity to create what we call an override. So any responder has this capability as long as, as well as a manager and so they could come in here to find their schedule and say okay let's say um dudley here said he's not available for his nighttime shift he needs some coverage if i click on his shift i get this dialog box that tells me exactly um what his shift is set up for now i will note that i'm currently in hawaii time um so we're viewing my this on-call shift in hawaii standard time as opposed to Pacific time when the schedule was created, I can then select who is going to provide coverage for him. So let's say at the team meeting, he asked for a volunteer and um, let's say Adrian here volunteered. So Adrian can then take over the entire shift or I could change it so he only needed to take partial uh, a part of the shift. Dudley could cover the rest of it. In this case, let's go ahead and create a, an override where Adrian's going to take over the entire shift. And now where Dudley's name was showing up Thursday night to Friday morning, now Adrian's name is showing up. All right, and so I'm going to click right into this customer support tier one primary schedule to just show you what that schedule looks like with that override layer. You can see Adrian's covering for a couple people um, in the upcoming weeks and Adrian's name is in this override layer here. As we talk about configuration layers, I do want to note that the bottom layer always takes precedence over the top layers. So in this case, the override layer is the bottom layer. It's going to take precedence over the upper layers here. So in the final schedule, only Adrian's name would show up. Hopefully this will make more sense as we create a couple of schedules. I'm going to start off by going back to my on-call schedules page and clicking on this new schedule button. So the new schedules button in the top right hand corner is going to be something that um, is available to folks who have either a base role of manager, um, have a team manager role, have a global admin role, uh, or an account owner role, because this is something that is part of our configuration. Um, so responders and observers, stakeholders cannot create these objects. Let's go ahead and give this schedule a name. I'm going to create what I call a very commonly used schedule, a, a weekly rotation. I'm going to call this my major incident management, management or MIM manager schedule. There we go. 
I could assign a team or different teams to this particular schedule as relevant. I can also choose what time zone I'm going to build this in. Now I said I am currently, and my profile is currently based in Hawaii. Um, so that's how I'm viewing information. That's the, the default. I can also search for a different time zone if I just wanted um, Pacific time. Let's see, it would usually give me a nice uh, drop down here. But for today's schedules, I'm going to be building my schedules in UTC. Um, so this allows me to set things up in a, in a time zone where we are not going to be influenced by any local daylight savings, any time changes. Um, so it's going to be a fixed point because after this manager schedule, you'll see that I'm going to build a couple follow the sun schedules for global teams. Now in this particular schedule though, our, our simple first schedule that we're going to put together, layer one or the first shift is a weekly shift. So my managers for my major incident management team are going to rotate on a weekly basis. Now I can label this here in the actual layer of the, um, of the schedule, or you can leave that layer one label there if you don't want to put anything additional. Step one though is adding users. So once we've filled it out those, ba those basic pieces of information, then we wanna find the appropriate users. Who is part of my management team? Let's say I have Alistair here, um, Katie is another one of my team managers, and Poppy. So the three of them are part of my team. They are going to be the team managers, and they're going to rotate on a weekly basis. Now I can change the order that they are going to rotate in by just dragging and dropping their names. And down below, um, as I look at the rotation, the weekly rotation, I can see how their names will, will change if needed um, as I move them around in order. And then we choose a rotation type in step number two. Now for this one, it's going to go with the default, the weekly rotation. I could choose daily, I could choose a custom duration. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well. And then handoff time. This is really just a fancy way of saying start of shift. So in today's um, example for my weekly rotation, let's say that my managers are going to rotate on call every Monday at 10 a.m. So that's when I want the shift to change. So if I look down below now, I can see that Katie is on call starting right now until next Monday at 10 a.m. And then it's going to rotate to Alistair. Alistair would then be on call for a full week. And if we scroll forward in the arrows, we can see he'll be on call until next, the following Monday at 10 a.m. So just a simple weekly rotation. This is one of our most commonly seen schedules. But again, you have a little bit of, um, you have some details you can choose, um, details you can add for the layer, uh, for the layer name. Now the last step allows you to choose a start time for this layer. So I could be creating this schedule, but I don't actually want it to go into effect until next Monday. So if I select next Monday, you can see that instead of starting with Katie right now, we're gonna start Katie's shift next Monday at 10 a.m. And she will then be on call for the full week before it rotates to Alistair. So you have that possibility of creating or even editing your schedules and setting a start time for a future date. For today though, I'm gonna go ahead and use um, this schedule. So I want it to start right away. Let me click save schedule down here in the bottom right. And I have created my first schedule. Again, this is a major incident management team manager schedule. Um, and so this is a very common, very simple schedule type. You can change the view that you would use in order to see the times as well. Again, it will default to your account, uh, your personal profile time zone. Um, so that's another reason why it was so important to choose your time zone when we talked about that in our session yesterday. I'm going to navigate back to the on-call schedules page to show you a slightly more complicated schedule now, um, something that we would call a follow the sun schedule. I'm going to click on this new schedule button we're going to create a brand new schedule. It's still going to be my major incident management or MIM schedule, but I'm going to call this primary. Now, the reason why I'm adding these labels here, manager, primary, backup, or secondary, is because this is going to help me determine what order these schedules are going to be used in when we put them into an escalation policy. 
who is the first person who's going to be contacted? Well, it's going to be my primary on-call person. Um, again, I'm going to choose this time zone and set it to UTC. I can add a short description here. Layer one represents my APJ shift. Layer two represents my EMEA shift. And layer three represents my Americas shift. So I have these three regions um, that are covered with our global team. And I wanna break up the day into three eight hour shifts. So each layer is going to represent a region. In this case, the first layer will be my APJ region. Um, and so I can come in here again, very simple, choose those users. So I can scroll through, find the appropriate users. I can search for somebody's name, whatever you would rather do here. Um, let's say I have three users, Draco, Padma, and James. They are part of my APJ team. And how did they want to rotate? The default is weekly but maybe they decided they wanted to rotate on a daily basis. Now, the handoff time is going to be the start of their shift for the sake of this follow the sun schedule. And because it is set in UTC, I actually have them all set to, um, for the APJ shift to be on call from midnight until 8 a.m. UTC. So their handoff time is going to be midnight. A new person will go on call every day at midnight. And if I scroll down, I can see the APJ layer has been created. And Draco here is going to be on call until midnight, at which point Padma comes on call. She'll be on call for 24 hours and then James, and they rotate every day. Okay, so I can leave this layer as is. I want it to start immediately. And let me create layer number two so we can see what it looks like when we have multiple layers here. Because as I mentioned earlier, if we have overlapping layers, only one person is ever going to be on call in a schedule. So here, let's say that I have my users for the EMEA region um, and I just can choose, I'm gonna stick with just three people for each of these different um, layers. You can have more users, you can have fewer users. Hopefully you have at least a couple people to rotate through though. Um, we don't want just one person on call if we can avoid it. Now. Let's keep that weekly rotation. Let's say that our EMEA team said they wanted to rotate every week, um, starting Mondays at 8 a.m., which is, again, 8 a.m. is going to be the start of their shift. If we scroll down and we see how those layers overlap, I wanted to remind you that in the final schedule, only Fleur's name is showing up. Not Draco, not Padma, not James, just Fleur, because she's the bottom layer. She takes precedence over the top layer. And so in the final schedule, only Fleur would be the person contacted. In a schedule, you can only have one person who's on call for the rotation. In escalation policies, I will talk a little bit about how we could contact multiple people if needed. But for right now, I want to actually add a restriction for this second step. When I click add restrictions, it allows me to say this shift, instead of being 24 hours of the day for a full week, this is actually going to be restricted to a particular time box, time of the day, or even a particular time of the week if I want to be more granular. For this, uh, for this particular schedule though, I'm going to add a restriction for time of the day to say my, my um, EMEA shift is going to be on call from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. That is their eight hour shift. Let me hit apply. And now we can see that the on-call person is only on call for that eight hour period. Now, how does that work with my APJ shift? Well, up above, I had, I had my APJ shift just on call for a full 24 hours. I could go back and add that restriction as well and say, I want to only have them on call from midnight until 8 a.m., which is what the APJ shift represents. And now we can see a really nice alignment of those shifts. So I have my APJ person, I have my EMEA person, but now I have this white gap, this empty space here in my schedule. So I did wanna emphasize for any of you who are team managers, for anybody who's looking at a schedule, if you see a gap in the final schedule like this, that means we don't have anybody on call for that period. Uh, so I could save my schedule right now and use this, but for this eight hour period, no one is on call, which means we cannot create an incident. So if you have no one on call for your entire escalation policy, so you have these schedules and they all have a gap here, 
there's nobody on call, we cannot create an incident because there's no one to assign the incident to. So that is something to take note. For right now, let's add a third layer. This is going to be my America's shift and I can choose the users who are part of that, um, that team. So let's say I have Angelina and Garrick and um, Katie here. Yeah, why not? So I have the three of them who are on call from my America's team. They said they wanted to rotate on a custom basis. Let's say they rotate every four days. So I have the ability to change the shift length if we choose a custom rotation type. I want them to begin right now, but I actually want the start of shift to be 4 p.m. Let's see, that's actually going to, yeah, that should be right. Um, so if we look at our schedule down below, the America's shift is now showing up four days and then it rotates to the next person. Um, it's overriding everybody else when it comes to our final schedule, which is not what we want. So we're gonna add restrictions and we're going to add that restriction to give them their um, on-call shift, which is 4 p.m. to, let's say, midnight. 4 p.m. to midnight is the third and final shift for this layer. So I can see Angelina here is on call and then it goes to Padma. Padma will be on call for eight hours before it goes to Fleur. And then it rotates between those three regions. Each of those regions, each shift has its own rotation type with its own team of people, but they all fit together really nicely to give us 24 seven coverage. So now I can save this schedule. That is a more complicated schedule. Again, I'm just giving you examples of a couple of our more commonly seen schedules. You should absolutely check out our schedules um, page on our support in our support documentation, our knowledge base, support.pageview.com, because we can give you some other examples right in that documentation. Now, I've created this schedule. I've configured all these layers. Fantastic. This is my primary schedule. The easiest way to set up a backup schedule is by using copy this schedule, this button over here on the right. So if I click copy the schedule, it is going to easily copy everything that I put in that previous schedule right here. I just need to put a new schedule name. So as an example, major incident management or MIM, team, instead of calling it primary though, let's call this backup or secondary, whatever term you'd rather use. Everything else is exactly the same though, which means that I'm going to wanna to change the rotation of my users. If Angelina here is on call for the Americas in the primary schedule, I'm going to wanna to just change the order of my users rotating and just move the top user to the bottom of the list or the bottom user to the top of the list, whichever one you'd rather do. You just need to um, make that change. So here where Angelina is on call for my primary schedule, Katie, one of her team members is now on call as her backup or the secondary person. Um, yeah, so great question about setting up rotations. You could choose to do a custom rotation where you rotate every two weeks or three weeks even. So you can have longer periods of time, weekly, daily, and you know, like a, a few hours at a time or a few days at a time. Those are our most commonly seen schedules, but do play around because you have that custom feature specifically built in so you can change the shift length for your circumstance. All right, so now that we've changed the order of our users, <clears throat> I can save this schedule. And now I have a very easy secondary or backup schedule. All right, I just wanted to quickly remind you, if you wanted to create an override, your users could come in and click on any shift um, of the schedule, that final schedule to create an override. And you have a button over here that says schedule an override. Any overrides created would show up over here on the right-hand side, so you could view them. You could also delete those shifts if needed. But just remember, schedules allow us to call on one person at a time. Now, we can then, really we need to use schedules um, by putting them into an escalation policy because schedules themselves are not going to be useful unless they are tied to this escalation path. So I'm gonna go back to this people menu and set up an escalation policy. Let me set up a very simple escalation policy using the schedules we just created. I'm going to click on this new escalation policy button on the far right. Again, this is something that a manager, a global admin or an account owner could set up. Let's call this our MIM 
EP or our major incident management escalation policy. You again would choose the appropriate descriptive name for you. And I wanted to say, okay, what happens when an incident is triggered? I'm going to get right into the meat of this. Immediately after the incident is triggered, rule number one, notify the following users or schedules. So I can come in here, click into this box. It will give me a list of all the schedules and the users within our account. And so here I can set it up so that if I search for my major incident management schedules, I can put my primary on-call person there. Um, and once I've answered, uh, once I've inserted this schedule, this is going to be my first person on call. How much time do I want to give them to acknowledge the incident? That's the key piece that we need to do for a responder to take ownership of an incident. But we don't want to wait for too long. So most of the time, I see something between five and fifteen minutes for the escalation timeout. My on call user for the primary schedule will have ten minutes to acknowledge the incident. If they do not acknowledge the incident in 10 minutes, we want to go to a backup person. And luckily, we created our MIM backup or secondary schedule, which we could use right here. I can give them a certain period of time. Let's say they have eight minutes to acknowledge the incident before it goes to a third level where we have our MIM manager schedule. Again, here we can give that manager a certain period of time. Let's give them 10 minutes again. And then I get to the end of my escalation policy. This is a very common setup, primary, backup, and then manager. Three levels with set periods of escalation times um, using their escalation, uh, sorry, their high urgency notification rules. They'll be contacted until their time runs out. Now, if nobody acknowledges the incident, I could end right there and just let it be an open incident, or I can repeat the escalation policy up to nine times. In this case, let's go ahead and repeat the escalation policy two times. Let me hit save. And so we've got we've got our escalation policy created now. So as I save it from top to bottom, I can read immediately after the incident is triggered, we're going to contact the primary on-call person, Angelina. She has 10 minutes to acknowledge the incident. We are contacting her using her high urgency notification rules that she set up in her user profile, which we talked about yesterday. So she has 10 minutes before it goes to her backup person. Katie has eight minutes. And then Katie's actually also the manager. So she will be contacted a second time for that um, 10 minute period. If she doesn't acknowledge the incident, we repeat this escalation policy. Now, if I go back one page, I also wanted to show you a slightly more complicated escalation policy here um, where I might have put multiple schedules or even individual users on a level of the escalation policy. So you can add multiple schedules. You can add. Um, you can add multiple users even to a level of the escalation policy. We don't recommend putting individual users on call because that means they'll never go off call. If you put them into an escalation policy, that means they can't have an override created. They would be on call 24-7, 365 days a year. So here I've set up multiple schedules for this first level of the escalation policy, but you'll notice that there's a little arrow here and it tells me that I have users who are signed via round robin. So I did want to just drop this little bit of um, vocabulary, this opportunity in front of you. It's something that you should explore further. It allows you to set up multiple teams to respond to incidents, but it will only assign it to one at a time. It will rotate between them on your escalation policy. Now, I see there's a great question in the chat about if you um, can you load your team resources into the system with their normal daily shifts and then have a view of where we don't have coverage around the clock. So there is no place where you could just compile it all and say, okay, for this team, this team of people, um, I can see all of my schedules in one place. But one workaround that I can think of off the top of my head is that because you can add schedules to your personal calendar, you could import the all of the schedules for your team members into one team calendar, and that would allow you to compile that view. That's a little bit of a workaround. It's not a perfect answer. Um, that's a great question, though, and something that we should definitely think about. And I know schedules are constantly being worked on, so uh, be on the lookout. We were constantly updating things internally, too. So um, keep that in mind. Please make a, a feature request if that is something that would be very useful to you and your teams. Thanks for asking about that. All right, I know we're at the end of our our time today, so um, I wanted to leave you with just a few resources, including a survey. 
as I have done in our last two sessions. We always want to collect feedback. We want to know how we can improve these sessions, especially because um, these are new uh, sessions that we are offering. We've never done this series before. Please give your feedback in the survey. If you do have further questions or have any feedback you would like to provide, you do have um, those opportunities through the resources I've shared here. Yeah, if you're interested in additional training, if you would like training that is specific to your team, um, we do offer custom trainings. If you will reach out to PDU at pagerduty.com, we can talk further about what those opportunities look like. And of course, the last thing I said I would show you are, of course, the series uh, of of these different sessions. Our last session tomorrow, we'll be looking at services and integrations. Um, so we will go through setting up a service and some integrations and talking about the flow of information to tie everything back together because then we will have configured all of the pieces that were needed to respond to an incident like we did in our first session. We will have recordings of these sessions um, available to everyone. They will be posted in our PageDuty University portal that university.pagery.com page by the end of this week or perhaps the start of next week. Uh, we are running these for the first time, so we are recording them as we go in hopes we can get a nice clean recording that we can share with everyone. All right, and with that, I hope that answers those questions that you had. Um, we hope we will see you tomorrow for part four. I will be going through setting up your services and integrations, but in the meantime, please go ahead and start experimenting with these schedules and escalation policies. Um, and we hope that we will see you tomorrow.